I think it's important that we understand our why. Why we get together. Why are we sitting in this room? Why do we have three services? Why are we packing out the parking lot in this room and having overflow and overflow in all the, the children's rooms? What's happening at Experience Church? Is this, is this a, a, a religious experience? Are we just here to check the box? Are we actually making an impact? Yeah. Yeah. This is the question that I wanna answer. We're here simply to connect people to Christ, equip them for success, and empower them for ministry. And there are families, as I look around here, I see families that have gone through that process or you're in that process. Maybe you came to us and you were broken and you're destitute, but your life is forever changed because of your place in this place. You're still alive today because of this place. You didn't commit suicide because of this place. I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact that you put the gun down because of this place, that you're still married because of this place. And it's not the building, it is the power of Jesus Christ working in this place. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard this statement, but I think it comes from the world. Correct me if I'm wrong. I've heard this a lot about churches. Oh, churches, all they want is your money. I've, I've heard that. It's come from the world. Why would you ever take advice about your faith from the world? I mean, Andrew, if you take your car to the mechanic because it's not doing well and you show up and you're, you're at the counter and you're explaining what's going on with your car and then you go, hey, you know what, Bob, can you check my back? I got this funky rash over here. Will you look at that too? You're not gonna ask your mechanic for health advice. You're not gonna be sitting with your doctor sitting on the butcher paper in your little linen robe as he pulls out the stethoscope and say, you know what, Doc, I've been meaning to ask you, my engine's making a funny noise. <laughs> so why in the world would you go to a non-Christian and get advice about Christianity and the word of God? You know, I, I, I did some research and I, I, I really ha had this statement resounding in my spirit quite a bit this week. You know, the church is, all they want is your money. And I got to thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? You, you want to know who's really all about getting your money? Casinos. Right. Yeah. 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 Casinos. We, we were out of town once, quadding, and we went into the casino to go to the restaurant. To get into the restaurant, to the buffet, you know, the great buffet, you got to pass by the tables. And I was with one of the guys, and he dropped 300 bucks on a table before I had three strides past the table. And I'm like, you know what I could have done with that $300? For the kingdom of God? Now, if you want to lose 300 bucks, that's your business. But check it out. Let me, let me just give you a little tidbit about the casinos. The industry as a whole targets precisely those who can least afford to lose their earnings. It's basically targeting those that have an addiction to gambling. One study showed that 75% of the customers who play occasionally at the casino only provide 4% of its earnings. The rest of the earnings come from those that have gambling addictions that keep the business going. And the impact of the casinos on the local property values is unambiguously negative. According to the National Association of Realtors, casinos do not revive local economies, they destroy them. They act as parasites upon their communities located within 10 miles of the casino, exhibit a double the rate of the problem of gambling. And notice it ticks all the boxes of addiction. Drinking, smoking, and sex. I just, it's just in the environment. Now, unsurprisingly, though, such communities also suffer higher rates of home foreclosures, added strain on the seniors' communities, and other form of economic distress and, and domestic violence. They're the ones that are after your money. Because when I think about a church, I think about what good does the church do? I remember Pastor Lori and I, we were in a service probably 22 years ago, and we'll never forget this statement from Pastor Leon Fontaine. He just recently passed from Canada. And he said this, he said, pastors, if your church ceases to exist, would your community know it? And 22 years ago, it stung me like a bee in the saddle. Because at 22 years ago, nobody would have cared. 
But I know today we are making an impact in this community and it would, it would matter. People would know. See, the world is confused about money. 1 Timothy 6.10, 6, this is in the New Testament. It says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And you want to know what some people hear? They go, well, you see, the Bible says money is evil. No, it doesn't. You need to be a theologian and correct them. It does not say money is evil. It says the love of money is evil. Money itself is not evil. Money can do amazing things. I mean, we can get into gun control. Go to Britain. You can see what gun control did for them. Now they got knife control. The problem is, is you cannot regulate the heart of man. That's why 2 Timothy 3, 1 says, you should know this, that in the last days, we're living in the last days. He's talking about the days we are in right now. It says it will be very difficult. Have you seen it getting more difficult? Have your grocery bills, oh, it's only 8% inflation. Really, why does my groceries cost 100% more? See, they can say 8% because they're graduating illiterate people. They can't even do math. I don't even know what 8% is. Wow, wow, it must be good. But it says, for people will love only themselves and their money. And so we have this dichotomy. We have this, this, this difference, this opposing convergence between the world and, and what the culture of Christ says that we should be. But the one thing that we know is we have to determine, is it self-worship or God-worship? We come back to this thought of the consumption assumption. The consumption assumption that everything that comes our way is for our use and our benefit. But see, we have to know that there is a God and it's not us. See, the, the great idolatry of the last days is gonna be self-worship. Self-worship, putting self above everything else. And so there's a vast difference between the church and casinos. There is. And you cannot treat the offering plate or the giving platform like a slot machine or a roulette. Well, well oh, come on. Now I'll try it this time. Maybe I'll get lucky. Now I'll put something in this week because I'll, I'll see if God works this time. Look, God's blessing doesn't come through the luck of the draw. It comes through trust and faith in God's word. <laughs> Hebrews 4.2. I'm gonna read this and then I'll, I'll unpack it just a little bit. It says the gospel was preached. He's talking about now the Israelites when they were in captivity in Egypt under Pharaoh's rule and then God delivered them and they come out of captivity and they're seeing signs, wonders, and miracles. God split the Red Sea. He's, he's bringing manna down from heaven. Amazing things have happened, right? Uh, cloud by day, fire by night to keep them you know, temp, temp in a good climate. And it says, unto us, that's you and I, the gospel's preached, as well as unto them. That's the Israelites back then. But the word preached didn't profit them. It didn't help them because they did not mix their faith with the word that was preached. See, you can come to church, you can hear the sermon, and you can walk out and say, I don't know, it didn't do anything for me. Meanwhile, the person right next to you says, my life's changed. See, it's not coming into this atmosphere that changes you. It is your willingness to mix your obedience with the word of God. It is your willingness, literally it means to agree, to unite, to synergistically agree and work together with the word of God and do what it says, and it's not what you hear. Well, I heard it. Hearing doesn't fix it. Doing fixes it. Look, you can go to all the marriage counseling in the world. You can go to the best marriage counselors and the best marriage conferences. But unless you do what you're learning, it won't work. And all the women said, man, you're mean. Wow. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. See, the tithe is 10%. And, and there are some of you, you, you've been a part of the body of Christ. And let, let me have you with this. First of all, I don't look at giving records. I, I have access to them, but I choose not to look at it because I can stand up here and look across this congregation and be clean of heart when I preach the word of God. 
But I'll tell you what I do know because I know human character. George Barna did a study and he found that only 3% of all Christians actually tithe 10% faithfully. See, finance is impact. Money is impact. Now there are some twisty organizations out there that call themselves churches and they're all about getting money. They have the gift of extrapolation to get money out of pockets and put it in their pockets. Look, I, I don't have to answer for them because they're before God and they will answer to God for their wickedness and their deceit. But when it comes to you trusting God, this is what I want. I want to see you blessed. I want to see you enriched. Why? Because God can do more with 90% when you give him 10 than you can do with 100. I mean, come on. How's it been working out with your 100%? I know that when I trust God and, I, and, and when Pastor Lori and I tithe, guess what? When a problem comes my way, it's not my problem. I say, God, you're my provider. You help me with this. I don't have to carry it. I don't have to wear it. I don't have to, oh, what am I going to do? I know what to do because I'm already doing it. I'm trusting God. I'm mixing the word of God with faith. Faith without works is dead. I got a testimony. Love testimonies. I have permission to share this too. I will keep their names anonymous, but I just want you to know if I share a testimony from up here, you're not gonna be sitting back there going, hey, he's talking about me. I didn't know he was gonna share that. See, I don't wanna do that to you. I don't wanna call you out like that, okay? So this testimony is of a family, and we got this this week, and so I got permission. And it said that they'd stopped tithing because they were in debt, and they wanted to get it paid off. Now, doesn't that sound moral? It sounds right. Actually, I don't even know who this couple is, by the way, because I chose not to know. So if you're sitting here today, I don't even know who you are. It sounds moral. It sounds right. Well, you know, we're paying this. If we take this, this, we get out of debt, and then we can trust God. Then, see, then we can trust God. Why wait to trust God? So, a few weeks ago, they heard in the offering when somebody came, Dario came up and did the offering, there was a nugget that dropped in their spirit. See, you can't teach somebody to tithe because it's not taught, it's caught, it's revelation knowledge. It, you, you cross the threshold of going from thinking to believing. I caught it, it's revelation. God's my provider, I trust him. And so, <clears throat> recently they decided to trust in God and tithe again because the debt just kept piling up. And then all of a sudden, her husband got a higher paying job and they're already seeing the plan to pay off the debt come into effect. That, that's a praise hallelujah. See, when you put God first, you will never come in second place. Never. And look, some people say, all you want is my money. No, I want, I tell you what, you go find another church, get planted and serve there and tithe there. Because this church is moving on with or without you. But this isn't about a motive of getting something from you. I'm trying to get something to you. To you. We're talking about impact. You know, when you die, hate to sound morbid, but welcome to reality. When you die, and people are standing around at your funeral afterwards eating potato salad and poi and rice and whatever else comes your way. Nobody's gonna be talking about how many possessions you got. They're not gonna be talking about your title or your affluence. They're gonna be talking about the impact that you made on their life. Because impact is everything. You know, in a lot of churches, they call themselves churches, but they actually have no impact out of the whole point of defending their wokeness. Their wokeness. But every church, every church is not a part of the church. Just because you call yourself a church doesn't mean you're a church. The Bible says, those that do what I say are my disciples. Those that keep my commandments are my disciples. I have one couple, and they said I could say this a while back, but they said when they came here, it was like coming on Sundays was like going to camp on the last night. You know, the, the pinnacle of camp, the pinnacle of the excitement of everything. And they walked into church and it was like going to camp at the end of the week every Sunday. Guess what? That's what it should be. 
You come in contact with a real God, with a real provider, with somebody that has vision for your life and, and impact for your life. There should be something that just resonates in you when you show up to church. We had another family, they were, they were attending church for 20 years somewhere else and they came here because their church went woke. And what happened? They said, we didn't even know what we were missing. So let me tell you about impact. I got Johnny and Chelsea here on the front row. Come on up here. They just finished the marriage enrichment class. They finished the marriage enrichment class and we had about 50 couples in there. And I was there for the graduation night and I heard their testimony. I went, you guys got to share this because this is impact of what God is doing here in this house. Chelsea. Chelsea. I started attending here about two years ago, and there was a marriage class, and I signed him up without telling him. Um, and it was one of the best choices that I made for us and that we fell through and did together. Um, we, before we came to this church, our marriage was falling apart. We were ready to separate, and uh, we started taking the marriage class, and God just filled our hearts, and that was the first time that we put Christ first, and our marriage flourished, and we've never been as strong. It, it saved our marriage, so... I just, um, I wanted to say thank you to Pastor and all of the great leaders from the marriage class as well, um, because uh, anytime that you put up walls around an area that you're going to cultivate for growth, the world is going to come in and try to rip it down and attack it, and so defending that is, you know, a difficult task, and uh, it can't happen without great leaders, and that's what we have here. And um, I know for me, I wasn't able to open my heart to my wife because I was so busy trying to survive that um, my heart was turned towards my work because I could make a difference there. Um, and the reason I couldn't make a difference with us is because I wasn't taught the good uh, communication tools. And so when she would come to me about an issue, my solution was to leave and go to work because I could make a difference there. And so um, that's what I've gotten from this class is tools to communicate. We're on the same page using the same words now and she can tell me what's wrong and then I can address it. And so, uh, yeah, thank you, Pastor, for that. <laughs> Proud of you. Thank you, thank you, man. Proud of you. Thank you. You know, one of the most powerful things they shared too is that they had no mentors. They had nobody to show them how to do it right. And being in an atmosphere like this, you've got some incredible people that can say, hey, we've been there, we've done that, let's, let's help navigate you, let's help coach you through this because we have so many families that have had no examples of how to do it right. But now you do. That's what this is about. You know, ch children and youth are vital the study shows that if you don't reach a child before they turn 18, there's an 80% chance that you won't reach them after that. It drops off like that. So, you know, seniors, we love you and we're gonna do ministry, but, but we really gotta focus on children and youth. Do you think the LGBTQ is focusing on seniors? Are they hitting the seniors community? Hey, grandpa, you can be a woman. You want to sign up? <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Biden will pay for it. <laughs> Children and youth are so vital, and we have to protect these. Jesus said, if any one of these offends one of these little ones, it's better you put a millstone around your neck and be thrown into the sea. Yeah. And so we, we had a, a family, we have a family in our church now, and I'm just so blessed because this family has three children, two of them, and I asked their permission to share this, two of them are special needs. Two. You imagine the daunting task. They ran into one of our team members this week and they said, we are so glad that we found Experience Church because we haven't been able to find a church for four years. You know, there's a lot of churches that they don't want complexities and they don't want challenges. But we prayed for that. We, we hoped for that. And, and I remember 
just a few weeks ago, meeting them for the very first time, getting to see all their kids for the first time. And, and I was kneeling down, look at the kids, and I looked up at mom and dad, and I said, this is a safe place for your family. This is your church home. We have our homeschool social. That's where our kids and parents are trying to figure out how to graduate these kids. How many people remember the, the, the statement that we would say, don't homeschool your kids, they'll turn out weird. <laughs> right? Now you send them to public school and what's happening? <laughs> and, and I wanna say props to our teachers here in public school because we are praying for you, we need you, you're standing in the gap. Bravo. And then benevolence. You know, life happens sometimes. Sometimes trauma shows up at your front door and you didn't know it, but when you got a church family around you, they can help navigate you through it. People with suddenlies that show up. People that struggled. People that got fired because they chose medical freedom. Lost their state jobs. But we were able to help navigate them through that. Financially, make sure that they could keep their house until they found new employment. That's what a church does. We had people with major surgeries. We had, we had families that lose, lost children. And I tell you what, when, when a family loses a children, we pull out all the stops. I don't care what it takes. We are going to make sure that we can do as much as we can for those families. And we have people that they're struggling with real, real challenges. And you know what we do? Because we know that we're not equipped to help them, so we pay for professional services, professional counseling, because they can't afford it. Maybe they're in a, a very difficult spot, so what we do is we step up, and we say, we'll help you with the, the first so, so many sessions because we're gonna help guide you through this and hold you accountable to, to come out of this differently. That's what a church does, and it takes money. It's not cheap. But those are vetted situations because we believe in not feeding people a fish for a day of gratification, but teaching them to fish to ensure a lifetime of success. We believe in impacting our community. We changed our school board. We worked with Motion Church. We collectively worked together and we got the right people on that school board to make sure that education was at the forefront. Our church is known in the community. It's known down at the Capitol, why? Because we stand up to the garbage, we stand up to the lies, and we stand with the legislators like Senator Gildon that is here today. We stand with him and others that are holding for the righteousness. And we believe in outreach for our law enforcement. Now, there's abuse and, and there's bad teachers. Do we kick all the bad teachers out? With all the teachers? No. But we believe in responsible policing. We believe in making sure the property is protected. Why? Because we don't have an immigration problem. We have an invasion problem. And you know what? Churches refuse to speak. And so many pastors refuse to speak up and say that this is going to be a spiritual chaos in this country and in this nation if we don't do something about it. Do we not see what's happening in New York? Do we not see what's happening in Chicago? And there's no penalty. Habakkuk 1.4 in the Old Testament, it says, the law has become paralyzed and there is no justice in the courts. The wicked far outnumber the righteous so that justice has become perverted. We are living this today. And we're living this in the state of Washington. And you have a church and a body of believers that is standing for truth and it doesn't come without a cost. But that's impact. I got a two minute video I wanna share with you and this is those that we're working with in Nepal, our church and our NGO. Greetings Pastor Dennis, Pastor Lori and Experience Church family. What a joy for us to celebrate our second anniversary of Experience Church Kathmandu. From past three weeks, we have been working to expand the property of our church and finally we make it happen. And today for the first time we did our service here at this property. And as we are growing and expanding, I strongly believe that God will allow us to grow in the areas of our life and in our ministry, and we will be committed to help people win in Christ. So at this moment, I want to say thank you to Pastor Dennis, Pastor Lori, and all the Experiencers family for always praying for us 
encouraging us and supporting us. We are so blessed to have you all in our life. That's right. We are so excited for the journey that is ahead of us. Looking back where and how we were, we thought ministry, it would be easy. Now, working as a ministry, now we know there's a lot of challenges and we have learned many lessons in this journey, these two years. By the grace of God, we expanded our church and we did our first service in this place. I am so happy and delighted that Hearts for Nepal is a part of Experientures and it fills my heart with joy to see our kids growing in ministry. We are also happy to announce that we are in the process of establishing our new office for Hearts for Nepal Foundation. Thank you so much, Experientures family, for being part of this wonderful blessing. As we continue to accelerate forward, we are excited to see the journey that has that God has in store for us, making the kingdom bigger and better. Thank you. Yes, and we all want to say thank, thank you. you. And we are a church that stands for biblical marriage. We are a church that stands for two genders. And we're a church that stands to help people that are dealing with same-sex attraction and to help that are those that are struggling with gender dysphoria. And we've, we've helped people with that because it's important to know that the truth sets people free. We believe in the right to life from the womb to the tomb. We believe that babies have life in, the, in, in mama's tomb just as much as elderly people should not be euthanized like they're doing in Canada today. We believe in responsible policing and that we're all created equal. But most importantly, we believe that there's nothing more important than somebody to get born again. What good is it to feed their bellies if they're gonna go to hell for an eternity? Today, if you're not here and you're, if you're here and you're not saved, you're not born again, what does that look like? Because there's a lot of people that are gonna go to hell with the wrong information. Maybe because of assumptions. Let me help you with this. Maybe you were christened, sprinkled. Maybe you've gone through confirmation classes. Maybe, maybe somebody said, well, I prayed for you. You're good to go. So many assumptions can lead people the wrong way. The word of God says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You know, Christianity is the only faith that believes that you can't work your way into heaven that our righteousness is like filthy rags. The only way to salvation is through the blood of Jesus Christ, him dying for us and resurrecting. And, and he's at the right hand of the Father for you today. He doesn't want one person to perish and go to hell, not one. But it's your decision, your choice. So today, if you wanna choose Christ or if you need to renew your faith in Christ, I'm gonna give you an opportunity. We're gonna pray a prayer together. I'll say the words, you repeat them. But bow your heads and close your eyes with me today. This is between you and God. And if that's you, today you wanna to commit your life to Christ for the first time or you need to renew that dedication to him, I'm gonna to count to three, one, two, three, and I'm gonna clap my hand. And when I do, just raise your hand right where you're at. And then we're gonna celebrate those hands and then we're all gonna pray a prayer. I'll say the words, we're gonna pray with those that are watching live on the, on the internet. The Spirit of God is knocking on your heart's door. This is your moment, here it is. I'm gonna to count to three and you, you lift your hand. One, two, three, lift it up if that's you today. Yes, I see that hand, yes, I see that hand, yes, I see that hand, yes, I see that hand. Is there anybody else, anyone else that chooses Jesus Christ? Yes, I see that hand, anyone else? Come on, let's celebrate that today. Yes, I see that hand. I want us to pray this prayer. I'll say the words, but you own it today. You own it today. Heavenly Father, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sin. I accept your son Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Live in me as I live for you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Come on, one more time.